is a life source here in Southern Nevada. We need to protect it. The Fox 5 weather team, Ted Pretty, Cassandra Jones, Sam Argier, and Les Criveton bring you this new special, Water in the Desert. Water in the Desert, where does it come from? How does it get into our homes? And do we do enough to conserve? Also, what big of a role do the strip casinos play in our water supply? And the biggest questions we receive, what does the water picture in Southern Nevada look like now? And what does it look like for the near future? In the next half hour, we'll walk you through those questions and get you answers. While the technology is in place to keep our water levels intact, we all play a big part. We may not think about the glass of water we drink or the amount of water we use, but the story behind how the water gets into your homes or businesses starts thousands of miles away. So where does Las Vegas get its water and what determines how much we actually do receive? Many think it's simply based on snowpack, and that's a big part of it, but it's not quite that easy. I went upstream to get some answers. This is Lake Powell. Along with the Colorado River and smaller reservoirs, it serves an important purpose for millions of Americans. 40 million people rely on this river for their drinking water, for their agriculture water. Uh, it's an important system. Lake Powell's water fluctuates greatly during the year because it's directly tied to mountain snowmelt. We peaked back in August at around 60% full. And then, so what, that's what you see is we, we come up in the springtime. Uh, usually it starts around April when the runoff starts to melt and we'll come up through middle of July. The sizable increases in water level are great to see, but the main purpose of Lake Powell is to store water year round. The Glen Canyon Dam holds back the water of Lake Powell and it's kind of like a water savings account for Las Vegas. We're guaranteed a certain amount of water each year. In a surplus year, we get a little bit more, but in a drought year with very little snowpack through the winter and early spring, we're guaranteed a base amount. This is one of the key storage facilities on the river for the upper basin and that the primary purpose was to, to hold water so that we could catch it when we have it in times of high rain, high snow, and we can hold it here in, so that we use it in times of drought. The Colorado River Compact of 1922 divided the water in half between the upper and lower basin states. The amount of water the Glen Canyon Dam is required to release is at least 7.5 million acre feet per year to California, Arizona, and Nevada. A treaty with two Mexican states years later pushed that required amount to 8.23 million acre feet per year. Which is one of the reasons we have reservoirs like this. So that even in a bad year, we have the water, we've stored the water, and we can meet those obligations downstream. Recently, there have been good years. This year will be the fifth year in a row where 9 million acre feet have been released. Next year, a little less. Right now, what we think for next year is that we're going to release 8.23, which will meet that obligation level, that's our target. Deciding on how much water will be released above the required 8.23 million acre feet is based on many factors. One is the elevation here at Lake Powell. Another is how much snowpack we got uh, the previous winter. Water level and mountain snowpack are tangible, measurable components, but the reclamation folks also look into the future using the latest technology for guidance. We really rely heavily on scientific models to show what our hydrology is going to be. Uh, now that's tough because I mean it's it's hard sometimes to tell what the weather is going to do next week uh, let alone 24 months from now or five years from now. Making the job a little easier is knowing that most of the water that flows out of the Glen Canyon Dam ends up in Lake Mead. Some water is lost to evaporation and some to ill filtration what is lost in the ground. Pretty much everything we release from here makes it into Lake Mead. Uh, there's not a lot of straws going into Lake Powell to pull water out. There's not a lot of use uh, other, than, other, other than cultural, recreational, uh, environmental use uh, down through Glen Canyon right here and into the Grand Canyon. And then as it comes out of the Grand Canyon, it's in Lake Mead. The issue of renegotiating water agreements so the southern basin states could actually receive more water from Lake Powell gets floated every once in a while. After all, Las Vegas has certainly increased its population since the 1920s. But so have other states. A renegotiation could take years to work out, and it doesn't guarantee that Nevada will get more water. All of the seven basin states voluntarily conserve a portion of their water. But starting in 2020, in the lower basin, they'll be required to. Nevada, Arizona, and Mexico will reduce their usage to protect Lake Mead, with the hope that leaving more water in the system will prevent a shortage. When this drought started about 20 years ago, we saw the water levels here at Lake Mead drop considerably. 
there were a couple of factors the Southern Nevada Water Authority needed to take into account. One of those was water quality. How would declining lake levels affect water quality that we access, treat, and bring into the valley? And the other concern, could water levels drop below established intakes or below the pumping capacity of those intakes? That's why the Southern Nevada Water Authority invested $817 million into constructing a three-mile-long tunnel. That tunnel allows access to the water supply and allows access to that supply even if we see bigger drops in lake levels. When you look at Lake Mead, one of the first things you notice is this massive bathtub ring. At the water's edge, we're 140 feet below where the water used to be. Boulder Dam, in operation about five years now, puts its great spillways to their first actual test. The last time Hoover Dam looked like this was 36 years ago. Water flowing over the top of the spillway and lake levels at the top of the dam. Will we ever see those conditions again? We don't know. Uh, the Colorado River system is highly variable. Uh, the hydrology changes year to year. Snowfall in the Rockies is the lifeblood for Lake Mead and the people who rely on it. But if the snowpack is low, more water is coming out than going in. Starting the period of 2000 to 2005, we entered in the driest five-year period ever seen on record, and that capacity dropped from 95% to below 50%. The drought persisted, but the need for water remained the same. Nevada, California, Arizona, and Mexico all rely on water from Lake Mead and the Colorado River. But divvying up who gets what and why they get it is complicated. No one wants to touch that. You know, you know it's like one of the thorniest issues in the West. Remember, whiskey's for drinking, water's for fighting. For now, it's settled. The Boulder Canyon Project Act of 1928 legislated how much each state in the lower basin gets and why. The West was settled under the water rights doctrine of first in time, first in line. And at the time, uh, when agriculture was the largest economic driver in the early and mid-1920s, California was already in production. California already had a population boom. And as a result, they were given most of the water with approximately 75% of it used for agriculture. While populations and growth has changed over the last 90 years, the allotments have remained the same. So let me break it down for you. There are a lot of numbers involved, so let's simplify it. The Colorado River is separated into two basins, upper and lower. Each basin gets 7.5 million acre feet a year. And in the lower basin, California gets by far the most, 58.7%, and Nevada by far the least at 4%. Under new guidelines, those numbers will become even smaller, first affecting Nevada, Arizona, and Mexico, which will keep an extra three feet in Lake Mead. And if levels drop another 38 feet, then California will be required to tap into their supply. And while Nevada doesn't get much, we learn to live with as little as possible. We didn't mean to be an efficient user. We'd love to party with it. We'd love to pour it in lawns and everything. But we've made a decision to live within the means of the valley. And one way we can serve is by reclaiming 100% of the water we use indoors. We can safely return it back to Lake Mead. And for every gallon that we put back in Lake Mead, we can take another gallon out and bring it into this valley as potable drinking water. We'd run out of physical space before we'd run out of water. 75% of all water in the lower Colorado River Basin is used for agriculture, and Nevadans benefit with the food that ends up on our plates. Now, while California doesn't have mandatory restrictions just quite yet, they have conserved already just this year five feet of water in Lake Mead. How things have changed. 20 years ago, we were using more water than was allocated to us under the agreement with the seven states along the Colorado River. Fast forward to today, we've bought into water conservation. We've become water smart, and now we've made sure that we have water that's gonna last us well into our future. As a community, we here in Southern Nevada have become very efficient in the way we use our water. According to Southern Nevada Water Authority's Bronson Max, since 2000, water consumption is down 25%, while our population has grown 46%. We are supplying more people with less water today than we did almost two decades ago. So we are buying into water conservation, which is good, but we can still do better. The biggest step is understanding where and how we use our water and how we can conserve. First of all, a figure we should all be proud of as a community, we reuse nearly 100% of all the water that gets used indoors. So if it goes down a drain, whether it's your shower, your sink, your toilet, or any other drain in this valley, that water gets reclaimed, 
treated to clean water standards that we can safely return it back to Lake Mead. So for every gallon of water that is treated and safely returned to Lake Mead, it means we can take another gallon out of the lake without it impacting our allotted water supply. That supply is 300,000 acre feet per year right now, and our allocation drops to 292,000 acre feet next year. In 2018, we used just 244,000 acre feet, and we're on track to use even less, 230,000 acre feet this year. So we won't even feel the water allotment change. Here's why. Our unused water supply gets banked, so even when we need it, we have it. Right now, based on our water usage, population growth and other variables, the earliest we would need to tap our reserves under current conditions is 2030. So for the next few decades, we have a healthy supply of water. So can we improve our water usage? It's the outdoor water that we only get to use once. There is our weakness. We use and waste a lot of water on lawns that are simply there for show. A good barometer for your lawn, if you don't play on it or you just walk on it, you don't need it. Here are the numbers to show you the water savings. Since the water conservation program started here two decades ago, 190 million square feet of grass has been removed from the valley, saving us billions of gallons of water. To make sure we stay on track, new construction in Southern Nevada has some very clear rules that developers must abide by. In new development, residential, there's no grass allowed in front yards and only 50% of your backyard can have grass. And then commercial development isn't allowed any turf at all. According to Bronson Mack, there's about another 5,000 acres of grass that the water district estimates could be removed in the valley that we wouldn't even miss, but would create a significant water saving. Here's the math. One acre comes out to about 43,560 square feet. So 5,000 acres equals 217 million square feet of grass. If we go by the water district's math that each square foot of grass uses 55 gallons of water a year, that's a whole lot of water that we can keep in Lake Mead for the future. As we look at our water usage here in Southern Nevada, we residents are the largest users and it makes sense. There are more home rooftops than hotels. Hotels and resorts actually use less than 10% of our water supply, yet they are our largest economic contributor. There are 150,000 hotel rooms here in the valley, most of which are right here along the Las Vegas Strip. Now we hear from a lot of people asking why these resorts waste water at the pools and on water features like this in front of the Mirage. Well, the reality is these resorts do use water efficiently. In fact, some of their water doesn't even come from Lake Mead. For a city in the middle of a desert, Las Vegas is much closer to water than it may appear. No one sort of looked at the fact that this was just a natural oasis. This was always well watered. In fact, when Elvis was dancing with Ann Margaret on this campus, when it was Nevada Southern, we were on well water and on just the Spring Mountains. Up until the early 1970s, most of our water came from a large aquifer under the valley. When rain and snow falls over the Spring Mountains, that water filters down and recharges the groundwater supply. We manage 10 wells uh, up and down the Las Vegas Strip, and they provide about 10% of our water for uh, primarily outdoor uses. MGM Resorts use that well water for irrigation and water features, including the fountains at the Bellagio. The Bellagio fountains use exclusively well water, and they are operated uh, with a very efficient team. We have very little evaporation off of the fountains because if it's too windy, too hot, we will cycle down or remove uh, some of the shows that we do because that we will evaporate some water in that case. The water rights go back decades. Pulling the same water the Dunes Casino and Golf Course did when it was on the site, the Venetian Resort's water rights go back to when the Sands was there. We have a 900 foot deep well that is used entirely for cooling tower makeup water. And it accounts for about 150 million gallons a year of water. The groundwater these resorts are tapping comes from the principal aquifer. It reaches 1,000 feet underground. Now much closer to the surface, just 20 feet underground, is a shallow aquifer filled with nuisance water. It's called that because it can't be used unless it's treated. This is where it all comes. At the bottom level of the Palazzo parking garage, water treatment machines filter that nuisance water. We designed and developed a system to clean the water up. It's actually better than municipal water at this point where the plants thrive, cleaning trucks will love it, and we have an abundance of it, so we piped it to our cooling tower. Efficiently using water is a top priority for these resorts. 
As technology evolves, small changes can have a big impact on the amount of water they use. When it comes to new technologies, we uh, implemented another project uh, for our swimming pools and spas, which is our glass uh, filtration media, which is to replace the traditional sand filtration media uh, that provides far better filtration and cleaner water, and that also helps save us almost close to six million gallons of water every year. Some of the most efficient, larger users in the state are the, is the casino industry, and nobody does more with what water they get in the casino industry, because if you look at what economy they produce off that water, it's amazing. These resorts aren't the only ones using groundwater. There are still thousands of active wells across the Las Vegas Valley. Water from those wells makes up 10% of the water that the Las Vegas Valley uses. Well, as we look around us, we wonder what does the future hold for water in the desert? We've talked about how we've got to where we are, but also how we can conserve what we have. You shouldn't really be concerned about us running out of water. That's because Southern Nevada has set the bar high when it comes to water conservation. Engineers and scientists will continue to work together with the neighboring states to ensure the resources are always there. So we've seen drought conditions around the southwest, but just know that so far we've gotten the water we've needed to survive and thrive. Over the past half hour, we hope that we've answered your questions about water here in the desert. There's so much more to this story, so we'll post more interviews and more content on a special web page on our website, fox5vegas.com. Southern Nevada is a beautiful place to live, and we must all take care of it. So do your part, and remember, it's up to all of us to conserve and preserve.